Hi, I'm Dr. Mindy Curry. I'm a naturopathic doctor and I do house calls in the greater Portland area and also have a, a home office in Milwaukee. And uh, I'm here today to tell you about how to make the Balm of Gilead, otherwise known as the Cottonwood Tip Salve. And uh, this is a, a wonderful salve. It's really great for the skin. It's very anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial. It's either analgesic because it's got some of the precursors to aspirin in there. Uh, so it decreases pain. It's healing. It increases skin proliferation. And it just smells so good. Oh. And basically, we're talking about the the tips, the spring, early spring tips found on um, various trees, but mainly three trees in North America here. And this is Populus trichocarpa, the black cottonwood, Populus angustifolia, folia, the narrow leaf balsam popper, and Populus balsamiflora, the regular balsam poplar. And what we're looking for is the sticky resin that's found in these early buds that are coming out very early in the spring, usually around March or May. Now you can extend that gathering season out a few months if you look for down branches. A lot of times branches will come down, but they won't be completely dead. They'll still have the tips, the cottonwood tips retaining um, up, up through April sometimes. And that's what it is right now. For me, it's April. And this is when I decided to go out and grab those tips before they're gone. Um, and so we're gonna go through a process where I take you out to the wetland and show you a cottonwood tree and actually collect some of these tips. And then we're gonna come back into the kitchen and use a cottonwood tip oil that I made in a previous video um, a while back to make a cottonwood salve right now for use. Um, directly. Um, now, cottonwood salve is really great for any kind of skin irritations such as eczema, rashes, psoriasis, um, cuts, insect bites and stings, sunburn, um, dry skin, chapped hands, even athlete's foot, and diaper rash. It's, it's perfectly okay for diaper rash as well. Um, and what's interesting about this balm of Gilead is that it's got a, a very long history being used as a healing, healing oil. Um, and it's mentioned several times in the Bible and also in the writings of Pliny the Elder. And basically it's a really historic, medicinally um, strong salve that uh, historically came from the ancient Gilead region in Palestine. Um, but these trees that have the same compounds grow in many places here in North America. We've got at least three kinds of trees that can make this salve. So that's what we're using here. Um, maybe if you're from a different region around the world, you'll recognize a slightly different recipe. But uh, basically that's what we're going for. Um, there are a few warnings about this. One is if you have sensitivity to aspirin or tree allergies, then you, this might not be the right salve for you. Um, and if you're unsure about this, you can do a spot test, see if you break out um, or have any kind of reaction to it. I wouldn't want, uh, wouldn't want you to inflame your allergies with this salve because there are components that are similar to aspirin in it, um, just naturally that come from the tree itself, from the balsam trees and tree allergies obviously well let's uh let's go out there into the wetland and find us some tips i'm out here in my wetland and here is a lovely cottonwood tree it's uh april so it's already gone into leaf so you're not going to find any cottonwood tips on the tree at this stage <clears throat> you should have done that if you wanted to from the tree itself earlier in the season probably around March but this is a good glimpse in what that tree looks like in all its glory 
Now what you're going to want to do if you're coming in late to the season like this is you're going to want to look for fallen limbs, limbs that have fallen over during a windstorm. And often those will still have cottonwood tips that you're going to want to collect on them. So let's go up and see. There was a really big windstorm. What we can find. And here they are. There's the cottonwood tips that we're going to want to collect. Still intact and still harvestable. There does get to be a certain point where even those bust out. But for, for the most part, there's still quite a number of good resinous, sappy buds left on these windswept sticks. They also at some point will kind of turn black and start to mold, so you want to avoid that. But before that, you can grab them. Kind of look at that. Looks pretty good. Now you'll be getting very sticky when you collect these. So just be aware. <laughs> but that does come off pretty easy with either alcohol rubbing alcohol or like a hand sanitizer even or even just rubbing on some good other kind of oil to dissolve the sticky resinous sap. The resinous sap of these guys is what you're looking for. Um, you can see it's quite sticky. Maybe you can see. You see kind of a, a gooey coating on there. And that's what we're going for is that resinous sticky sap where all the good stuff's at. Look at that beautiful cottonwood tree. You can see its leaves are somewhat heart shaped. And this one is very happy to be in this wetland. It's got kind of a, a grayish, greenish bark with like little little sheets. Another way to identify it. And that's all you'll do if you're seeing it in the early spring when there isn't any leaves on it. You'll identify it by the look of the tip and by the smell, the extreme good smell that you get from rubbing that tip around in your finger and getting that, that sap, that really sticky sap on your finger. That's how you'll identify it. It's mostly by smell and touch and by the bark. Now here you can see that after maybe just uh, five minutes of picking these cottonwood tips from the down limbs of the black cottonwood tree out in our wetland, uh, my hand is very sticky. That's, that's the good stuff. That's what we're going for is that sticky resin. It's all up in these buds, these little tips. And uh, there's a variety of sizes you can get. You can get the little tiny ones that are really tight. Or you can get ones that are, are just about to bust out. And those are fine too. They'll both contain the icky, sticky sap. And it smells so good. Um, you do kind of want to watch out for, if you're picking from a tree that's not on the ground, the tips, the very tips of the branches, there'll be a really big, juicy bud. And you'll be tempted to take those, but you probably shouldn't because that's where the tree is going to be growing out and you want that tree to be able to keep growing and keep producing more buds also if you're taking from a live tree in the early spring don't take more than say a third of the buds on each branch you want that branch to be able to continue to grow and not just be devastated by your one little harvest in the spring and, and kind of move from tree to tree don't don't strip one tree down too much if you can like I said, it can be slightly, slightly starting to leaf out or more tightly, tightly kept. Just keep an eye for anything that looks rotten, really black. Well, that's just a little dark, but I wouldn't call that black. It's still soft. They can get very dry and crunchy. You know, that's when they're, they're not in their prime anymore. But uh, 
we'll take that and I'll put that, usually I put avocado oil or grapeseed oil or um, olive oil, really any good skin loving oil and we'll fill that all the way up to the top and set that aside for another year or at least at least six weeks before you make your salve but I often just put that aside until I use it which uh, can be quite a while in some cases could be next year could be six weeks but you can leave them in there once you get the oil in there they will stay very well preserved all on their own because of their very strong antimicrobial aspects that's how you make a cotton wood tip oil and now we'll go and use one that I've made in the past and turn that into a salve to get that salve off your fingers you can kind of just put some more oil on there and just kind of work that oil around and you'll see it start to come off and hit it with some good strong soap but some of that same avocado oil I use to fill the jar I'm using just to get that off. It'll come off pretty easy. But my hands will smell delicious for the rest of the day. Okay, here we are back in the kitchen and we've got uh, my cottonwood tips in avocado oil from a previous uh, picking season um, and I've strained that out just with a uh, this is a funnel that's got a little sieve at the bottom of it which is great um, I really like it um, let's see if I can show that to you see there it is it just separates the chunks from whatever goes in the funnel and I love that Love it, love it, love it. Ooh, don't love this. <laughs> Any case, what we've got basically now, you can see we've got about a, a, almost perfectly eight ounces of that cottonwood tip oil. And we're going to make a salve with that. So let's go ahead and put this. I'm using the easy salve method. It goes crock pot. A mini crock pot. Just put that in there. And I'm going to try to get that oil up to a good temperature for melting the beeswax pellets here. We've got these beeswax pellets. Um, the variety of brands, organic is great. And that just makes it a lot easier to use beeswax. Now the melting point of beeswax is about 150. Um, and so you want to kind of catch it right as it hits that melting point. In, so you don't have to heat your oils up too much and lose very much volatile oils. Um, also, if you go too high with the oil or at the temperature of the beeswax, over 185, I believe, Fahrenheit, that uh, starts to discolor and isn't as great. So we're going to try not to go too high in temperature on our oil. Let's see where it's at. I have been preheating this crock pot so it could be getting pretty warm already. like we're coming in just below the melting point of beeswax but it won't be long I don't think so let's go ahead and get that ready yeah we're pretty close to 150 here yeah let's go ahead and turn that down to low and get my beeswax pellet the recipe for the balm of Gilead is basically one cup cottonwood oil 
um, one ounce or about two tablespoons of beeswax pellets. These are great, but sometimes you just get a big chunk and you can figure that out too. Um, a quarter teaspoon of vitamin E oil. Okay, so let's go ahead and add these beeswax pellets. Looking about two tablespoons of beeswax pellets in here. You can go twice as many pellets if you want a much thicker salve. This seems like an okay kind of a salve for my purposes for this one. And you kind of tip that, show you what that looks like. They're just kind of floating around in there right now. Pretty soon they're going to decide to melt. Because I can see them melting in real time. And speed that up just a little bit, giving it a little stir. While I wait that to melt, I'll get my vitamin E. I'm going to add that in at the very last though. They're going pretty fast. And that's the power of preheating your mini crock pot. Let's see, we're getting a lot less pellet floating in there, just a few left. I'm going to go ahead and add that vitamin E oil now. So there's a couple more pellets. That looks pretty well melted, don't you think? So at that point, you can go ahead and you can try testing. You might decide you want a stronger amount of beeswax pellets. The easy way to tell that is just to put it on a nice cold spoon, let it dry out a little bit there and then see if that's a good consistency for you hmm. you know today i think i will add a little bit more beeswax pellet see a little a little thinner than i'm used to so i'm upping i think a tablespoon almost beeswax pellets There's kind of uh, anywhere between two tablespoons to four tablespoons of beeswax pellets, perfectly acceptable. It just depends on your personal preference, how thick you want your salve to be. We just stir those in again. We'll see what the difference is here in just a second. Oh, there's one last guy. Oh, he wants to melt. Melt, melt. I'm melting. I'm melting. Melted. Doesn't take too long with a nice warm crock pot. Try for another little sample. So hot. I like that a little bit better. It to me seems like a slightly better consistency. 
for a serve. So the next thing to do is get your jars out and uh, give it a pour. And there you have it. Always good to wipe down the edges of your jars before you close them up. This one especially, since it can be somewhat of a sticky salve. And it's wax, you could seal your lid in there too tight. Don't want that. You want just the right amount of seal. These will go ahead and uh, cap them while they're still hot. And that'll keep it very very well. It will then cool off in there. We'll come back in a moment and look at this salve once it's cooled off a bit. But we can also play with what's left in the jar. can see it. Nice little salve. That's even with my warm little fingers. Mmm, the smell is divine. You've got to smell this. Mmm. Ah. Mmm. Yay. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs, and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> so don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area, and I also have an office in Milwaukee.